So our first guest today is Guillaume de Ramel. Um, if some of you don't remember, Guillaume was the more liberal candidate running in 2006 for Secretary of State. He unfortunately lost to Ralph Mollis, who is most famous for being one of the main uh, main pushers of the voter ID law, which of course is one of our top priorities for repeal, which unfortunately we didn't get done last session. But we will be trying again this session. And um, I'd like to have him introduce himself and answer a few questions about his vision for the Secretary of State's office. Great. Well, thank you so much. It's always nice to uh, to hear somebody actually say my name my name properly. It's I, 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 so I figured I'd write it up there just in case, both the way it's spelt and phonetically. But it's uh, a friend of mine likes to joke and says, uh, "Guillaume, it's really simple. It's just Guillaume. It's like a race car, Guillaume." <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much for coming uh, tonight. This is uh, this is great to see our uh, our. Democracy in action. I mean, it's certainly not a, a by you know a spectator sport. This is you know seeing you here getting involved uh, really gets me encouraged that I'm doing this for the right reasons and getting people uh, like you to listen and, and hear. And, and I think uh, seeing Sam at the state state house, literally you know, in in committee. I think when was the last time I saw you up there? Voter ID. Voter there. ID. Uh, when we were up at the uh, the committee hearing. Wondering why is this taking so long to get through the committee here? Where is it? What's going on? What's you know like that uh, unfortunate um, nonsense that, that tends to happen, especially during the, uh, the waning days of the session. But um, anyhow, as he mentioned, I ran in 2006. Um, close, but not close enough. But I certainly learned a lot uh, from that experience, and uh, I won't bore you with all the details. But it was it was it was. Definitely a very uh, humbling experience, but I come I come back running for this office again because I believe in the office. Um, I think there's extraordinary p potential, um, and I'll tell you. I mean, looking back at the issues then and the issues now, I mean, peak employment was December 2006, and Rhode Island. I mean, I'm not trying to be the the downer here, but Rhode Island is unfortunately still stuck in this rut. I have a, a brother who lives down in Wilmington, Delaware, and I see the economy there. I see the, the economy in, in Massachusetts, our neighbors, neighboring states. It's night and day different, and uh, there's really no reason for that. So I'll tell you, I mean, I, the reason why I mentioned that 2006 uh, period and now, it's very clear to me. I mean, I, I know this office inside and out. I know I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about issues. Um, very progressive issues that I, that are very near and dear to me. At the archives, I mean, the incredible rich history that's in there. But uh, the one thing that really gets me motivated to run again is to is to really try to make a meaningful impact in the uh, the business climate here. Um, I, uh, I I have uh, two beautiful kids, two young, they're young, eight and five, um, live in in uh, Newport on the Quinnick Island. Um, I love this state. I really want to give back. Uh, my my family's been here for generations, um, but I see I see this problem going back to the economy of friends not being able to come um, here because there's no job opportunities. Uh, I see you know younger people, very talented people, who go to some of our incredible academic in institutions, and they can't stay here. I mean, we're I think we're almost in this industry of exporting talent. Uh, it's a shame. And I'll tell you, I'm going to argue. That the reason for that is is the, the bureaucratic you know disconnect, and this is where the Secretary of State's office could play a huge role. Um, I've started my background's been in, in decisively business, uh, small business, specifically in real estate. Um, from an academic standpoint, I uh, I studied architecture, then did a graduate uh, program in real estate development at Columbia, and then went to work in the real estate finance industry. But I see how hard it is. To start a business, especially a small business, I've talked to people who've tried to start, you know, uh, be it a restaurant. Um, actually, I heard a really shocking story, but it's not. It's not shocking, but it's disappointing to hear. I mean, this fellow was trying to start a um, sushi restaurant, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. He got Connecticut, Massachusetts done, abandoned Rhode Island. Said it was just too complicated. That's that's unfortunate. And and the problem is, um, if you know, 
I'm a firm believer in regulations. I serve on the CRMC, and I, believe, I love the Bay, I love the environment, uh, but it's not fair to the small people who, who have to try to negotiate this without an army of attorneys, without uh, an, you know, a group of uh, consultants. You know, not too many people can afford that and you know, st start a business and have it run. That's where I want to make a difference. I know, I really do believe that the Secretary of State's office can and will play a huge role in trying to streamline um, the rules and regulations. I mean, Sam, I'm sure I keep on pointing to him because I've seen him at the State House, but anybody who's tried to navigate the, the, the regulations um, separate from the, what the actual General Assembly does, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to do. And, and I think of a little, the mechanic, let's say, down on Aquatic Island who wants to start his business and keep it going and employ people. He knows how to operate his business. But then to try to navigate some of the, uh, the regulatory uh, red tape, it's tough. It's too much. And it's not the same thing up in, uh, in, in Massachusetts. Uh, and hence the reason why there's a, I mean, more progress over there economically. Um, I know, I'm, I mean, I'm probably, it sounds like I may be overselling that the Secretary of State's function, but I'll tell you, I mean, it has a huge role in, in our, our hopefully economic recovery. You know, we talk a lot about small businesses. I, I want to do less talk and actually do it and help uh, these, small, uh, these small groups. I, uh, just to give you a little bit more background of in me, I told you that academically, I've, I've Business-wise, I've, I've, I've been involved in real estate, real estate finance commercially, uh, but I, I've also been involved philanthropically on really, uh, I think, um, important causes. One, for example, I think it's probably uh, important to you is, is the marriage equality. Um, I came through with uh, with Ray Sullivan, who's a, a dear friend of mine, when when there were some real economic problems uh, in that, um, with some financial assistance. But I've also helped groups like uh, International Institute or uh, the Institute for Study of Nonviolence. Uh, I, I see these incredible organizations that run on a shoestring budget. It's incredible. We were talking earlier about, you know, the, uh, I had a meeting with uh, Taft, who's, who's the head of the Providence uh, Police Union, and uh, he told me that, uh, guess, guess how many police officers there are in the, the city of Providence? 480 <laughs> police officers. Guess how many there they're on the streets right now, tonight? 10. 23. <laughs> 23. And think about the impact that has on the economy. I mean, you know, it, it, it's shocking. It's shocking to me to hear that number. But, uh, but you wonder why there's, there's the increased violence. I feel terrible for those 23 officers who have to go around by themselves. Imagine, I mean, no, no, no two uh, person uh, cruisers. It, literally, I mean, it's, 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 it's sad. And I've seen, I mean, joking aside, Johnston Mayor uh, Policina. Uh, says, gee, come, come to our town. You know, it's a lot safer here. I guarantee you, Massachusetts, you know, does the same thing. We need to change that. But the only way we can do that is to grow, grow the base, grow the business base. Talk to Taft. Talk to some of the uh, the labor leaders. They're the same way. Uh, they believe that we, you know, we need to, to, to build this economy so that everybody uh, rises up again. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, one of the things that I did between my, my, my last race and uh, and this time around is steering my family to make a major gift to Rhode Island Hospital um, to start a neurosciences institute. I see it uh, as an incredible field that Rhode Island can make a, a significant impact, not just in the state, but nationally. Um, and hopefully, who knows, maybe internationally. But this is um, literally an incredible field that, that we know so little, um, but we have such incredible resources. I know there's, there's a whole bunch of people here who are uh, brown. Um, grads are studying at, 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 at Brown. That's what really energized me to make uh, to steer this there. The neurosciences, John Donahue, who was on 60 Minutes, I don't know, maybe five, ten years ago, where he uh, invented a chip that um, they're planning in, uh, well, initially in monkeys, but in paraplegic uh, people with uh, severe, uh, what do you call it, uh, paralysis. And uh, they've got a lady on 60 Minutes literally operating a robotic arm through this chip. That's happening here in Rhode Island, here in Providence. You look at some of uh, the ha what's happening at Butler. You've got uh, Steve Rasmussen, who's uh, probably one of the leading OCD uh, doctors. He invented the scale of severity here in Rhode Island. You see those, those type of opportunities. You know, to try to do, to scale up in Boston and New York, real estate's too expensive. 
I mean, in a, you know, they're going to be the 800-pound gorilla when it comes to cardiac and, uh, and, and oncology. But neurosciences, Rhode Island, we have incredible cheap, or I should say inexpensive uh, land, 195 area, where we could develop this knowledge di district. Um, we have the talent here. Let's try to make it work. Um, but exciting pr you know, opportunities like that, I seized on, and, um, and I hope that we can you know, keep on going with that. With that, I, uh, I'd love to take questions. I know I've kind of blazed through uh, this and that. Anything? I mean, if you have any questions about please. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, we're talking about the importance of streamlining the complicated regs that are uh, inhibiting businesses. Could you give us some examples specifically of what kinds of uh, changes you'd want to make? I'd, I'd love to. One, one idea that I, um, I think would be relatively simple to, uh, to manage, but for example, say you're, uh, you're a restaurant owner right now and you're interested in Department of Health, not only on the rules that they have existing right now, but say um, when they want to promulgate some new, new rules and they have a public notice for, for, for the public to participate in, now it's buried. I mean, you have to, I think you have to go on their website. Um, they do have to publish the meeting on the Secretary of State's website. Um, but say you're interested, why, don't, why can't you get an email um, that you're interested, say you're interested in the Department of Health, get literally zapped an email anytime there's any kind of uh, interest in it, either a change of, of rule or, um, or actual change in the rule. This, this, these are small changes, but I mean, for, some, for a small business who can't hire a lobbyist, who can't hire an attorney to constantly keep up with, with the Department of Health, um, that would make a huge impact on it. Um, so that's one, one example. Please. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, just ask me, you know, uh, so you would cut through the red tape of business regulations. Now you're concentrating totally on business, your speech, not necessarily you, um, on uh, making it easier for business to um, to be to uh, grow here. And I agree with you. Uh, the problem that I, I see, and I'd like to hear what you say about it, is uh, no matter how many businesses we have opening up in Rhode Island, the tax structure is such that uh, it doesn't trickle down and so the communities don't get any uh, because of the tax structure. I know you, as a Secretary of State you can't affect the tax structure. However, I want to know what your, what your feelings about that are. And I also would like you to talk, you mentioned voter ID very, uh, you know, very quickly, I'd like you to really talk about um, uh, the, the whole, your whole attitude towards changing the, uh, the voter ID, not only the voter ID law, but in terms of, of uh, get and re-enfranchising people. Yeah, well, let me start with the voter ID, because that's, I think, to me, it's a very simple, uh, clear-cut um, issue there. I, I, I think it's really unfortunate that they passed that law um, and they didn't repeal it. Um, it's, it's been no great secret that it's been used to disenfranchise it's mm -hmm. in, in many, many red states. Um, and, I'm, and, and I'm concerned because, I mean, right now, the way it's enacted, it didn't, didn't get scaled back. We're going to be up there in one of the more so restrictive... So, what would you... Well, I mean, I mean what, you, you can... I can't, the, when I was talking to that, testifying to that in the, in city, in the, in the state house, uh, Mr. Mollis was uh, praising it to the roof. So, would you actively go and try and change that? Absolutely. I think one of the, uh, and I've heard the testimony in the Senate and the House, um, that the thing that I keep on hearing is this perceived threat. I want to see the data. I mean, have we, have we been collecting? There's been, there's been absolutely none. There's been none. I mean, I, but, but since when do we make institutional wholesale changes to our election system um, when already we look at the voter turnout? Pathetic. Mm -hmm. It's sad. I mean, look at uh, it's 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 not the right direction we should be going. And again, going back to this perceived threat, that's uh, that's not how we uh, we run our our. our so democracy. would that be one of your priorities? Um, I, it would be. I, I'm, I'm. I'll tell you. I have to focus. I am. My top priority is trying to figure out how to help uh, small businesses here in this state. Um, but absolutely, that's something that needs to be changed before. But there's nothing I can do. I mean, I think the full until until I get in. But the full legislation gets into effect by 2014. 2014, yes. By, 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 by photo, photo ID, current photo ID. Co current fo photo ID. 
uh, unless the General Assembly actually looks at it and tackles it this uh, coming January, which I haven't seen anybody, you know, in the, the General Assembly look at it, which is sad because, I mean, you see, you know, I mean, there's there's some important issues okay. out there. Yeah. All right. And so... Uh, and back to your... Right. your right. Fine. Anybody else? Like, I'm sorry. Well, we can get back to it, but but I mean, back to your 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 uh, question about taxes. As you said, the Secretary of State doesn't have any uh, direct inter you know play with it. However, I'd love to. Uh, I mean, information information is power, and the Secretary of State's office literally has should by constitution is literally the keeper of records. All the rules and regulations, all the city and town, everybody publishes their information through the Secretary of State's office. But trying to make that more accessible. Um, I think eventually, I know, we'll make it more, uh, we'll make our government more effective and more, more transparent, therefore hopefully help uh, you know, the whole process in the end. But one thing I really want to get to, though, specifically mm -hmm. at that point, um, one idea, and maybe this is too specific, but I'd, l I'd love to see a national, I mean, a, a statewide uh, municipal uh, uh, bidding uh, database, if you or a market. Right now, I have a friend who owns an asphalt paving company. Um, he literally has to scour through the 39th or 34 cities and towns to figure out who's got a, an RFP for, for, for contracts. How, how is that possibly good for the cities and towns? Now, I know I understand the state does this at the state level, but why can't we offer this for the, for the cities and towns to help? I mean, collectively, uh, you know, purchase. Uh, things. I mean, I mean, there's things like that that we can do again to try to help uh, the burden. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Please. Right. Uh, let's see. To uh, put to, uh, that in a kind of a different angle. Uh, aside from the larger question of uh, taxes and the division that uh, really is more of a matter for the General Assembly. Uh, I see the Secretary of State as having a little more influence in terms of, uh, say, the uh, structure of the taxes when it comes to uh, fees on businesses versus the overall tax rate. And I see that uh, $500 starting fee as a major burden uh, when it comes to somebody who is starting out as a hobby, preventing them from transitioning that into uh, their actual employment and being able to really represent themselves as a starting a business versus this is just my hobby. And maybe that's kind of a bird, kind of a uh, stumbling block there. So uh, would you be willing to uh, uh, speak on that? Absolutely, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, that's something that, that to me, I've had actually conversations with Helio Mello, who's the chair of the Finance Committee, who actually agrees that, that, that we need to change that. He sees, you know, I think the, the, the gross number is about $22 million to, uh, in the, to the state from those $500 uh, minimum tax fees. But you know, having started several small businesses, I, re I I understand how hard it is, and if, if it's going to fail, it's probably going to fail. And that, I mean, I, I, don't quote me on this, but the first three years, let's say, I think that's probably generous. But why are we going to why are we going to stick it to as you said? I mean, if it's a hobby or something, I mean, to a small entity that's trying to get off the ground um, that may not be around in three years, four years, five years. So why don't, why can't we graduate it? You know. Let's let's have some compromise to see how it worked. I understand if the general assembly, you know, right now with the with the with the, the budget concerns that we have, uh, just absolutely can't do it. Which I disagree. I think this is a huge opportunity. Uh, but let's try to figure out. Let's be creative about how we can do this. Um, and I, I've had conversations with him. And I think he'd certainly be open to to suggestions like that, which I think would make a huge impact. I mean, I hear that time and time again from uh, from especially small businesses. That, gee, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, why 500 bucks and what do I get for it? And by the way, I mean, I, I won't mention his name, but I know somebody who just had to uh, unwind his business and was doing it the proper way. But the process of doing that, I mean, the process of starting, getting the licensing, permitting, etc., and then to, to unwind it, you know, which is unfortunate, uh, is, is, is really complicated, needlessly complicated. So, sorry, a little tangent, but great question. Thank you. Thank you. Can I follow up a little bit on that? Please, um, yeah. Just uh, overall, uh, I know the $500 startup tax for a small business was um, in Governor Chapey's uh, fiscal year 2014 proposal to the House and Senate Finance Committees, uh, respectively. He had talked about potentially 
eliminating that along with um, progressive reduction to the point of elimination of corporate taxes in general. Uh, now, how do you feel about that? I mean, that's, that's I, I think the, the argument against it and why it, it didn't end up getting pushed through was, was because it was budgetarily a, a loss of something like $900 million uh, in, in, um, in, in tax revenue. Right? What was it, nine? Nine hundred million, I believe. They, they said something like that. Not just That's the five hundred million, but, but corporate taxes in corporate general taxes. Over, over the course of uh, the four-year uh, reduction and, until the point of elimination. Now, I, I personally, I saw that as a, an interesting concept to make us more of a, a business competitive state, which I have mixed feelings on, but I mean, I believe that we do need to be a more business competitive state because I work for unemployment insurance and I see the unemployment rates and they actually over the past few months have been going back up, ticking back up. They're 9.1% for August, they're going to be probably 9.3% for September, and, and that's going to put us right back into competition. Um, I also am kind of the representative union thug of the group too. So. You know, as, as a state employee and, and a union leader, um, I, I, I saw that as, as a potential way to attract more businesses um, and at the same time talking about growth. What, what do you think about those kinds of ideas and working with uh, other members of the executive branch to, to put something like that through for the next fiscal year's budget proposal? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, fortunately, or unfortunately, our size, or the smallest state in, the, in the, the country, we have neighbors who we have to compete with. Now, if Massachusetts, uh, do, do you know what their corporate, we have to be competitive yes, with what Massachusetts nice. does. We can't act as if we're in a complete, um, you know, separate universe, which we have in the past, which is unfortunate because, I mean, and then, I mean, we get completely disconnected from, uh, from, you know, attracting new businesses, much less keeping some of these businesses that we have now. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I'd love to see more. This is not really what you're asking about, but I, I'm, I'm shocked. Who, who is marketing the state outside the state? I, I mean, I've had conversations with people at EDC. Nobody is. Why? Why is that? I mean, we have so much going forward. Uh, I, I've seen some states where the governor does a lot of that function. Um, why, why is that? Why isn't you know, somebody marketing uh, the incredible marine trades that we have here? Um, by the way, speaking of that, when we dropped that, uh, the, the boat's sales and use tax to zero, huge boom uh, in, 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 in services. We're talking about, you know, uh, solid jobs and, and, and an industry that we really can thrive on. Um, and I've seen it. I mean, maybe I, being in Newport, I've seen a uh, great, great opportunity there. But absolutely, I'd love to see that us be more competitive regionally. You know, I think uh, that's critical for me to... You know, succeed. Thank you. Sam. So, in the past, you've given uh, a few thousand dollars to Gina Raimondo, and including two hundred dollars after the pension cuts. Oh, the bulk were before that. Uh, and I know I've seen you at a at a Tavera, small dollar Tavares fundraiser, but I'm wondering if you'd be willing to uh, match your past contributions to Raimondo with contributions to Tavares. I'm going to check that because I think I gave, I know I gave uh, Gina when she, before she ran, 500. And then I gave her 200, but I can't remember exactly the timing. But look, I, 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 I yeah, I, I support, I support Democrats. Um, you, I mean, uh, across the board from state rep to house, um, you know, could I have done a little bit more due diligence? I think we have two, you know, very qualified uh, candidates. I'm not going to get in the middle of that, you know, that 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 race, the governor's race. I have my own primary mm -hmm. to worry about um, potentially, but you know, this is this that, that's my direction now. So that was how many years ago? Was it? Was it? <laughs> no, I'm <not> sure. Look at the because actually I looked at I, I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> but it was, uh, was it, no, it was two years ago. In hundred dollars, two years ago, in two thousand, so three years ago, September seventh. But I think there was a contribution in twenty twelve. At least I don't know. I, there is. Yeah. Oh, there is. There is. I'm sorry. You're right. Um, she's ruthless, by the way. 
She is with us. <laughs> we, we're oh, we, we have, I'll, 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 I'll say, say that too. That. That's the that uh, most true thing you yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, from, from, a, from a budget, I mean, from a fundraising standpoint, um, and maybe I, you know, from a fundraising, maybe I should be more ruthless uh, as well. But look, I've got my race. I'm, uh, I having run in, you know, in a Democratic primary. I understand how these contributions. But look, I, I, I'm absolutely committed to running for Secretary of State. Focus on mine. I don't want to get in anybody else's uh, primary, and you know that's that's only fair to me and to them. So, so would you be willing to balance your contributions, though, so that you have? No, because then that sends the wrong message too. I mean, and, and by the way, the mayor has not asked me, and I know that's the rule. I mean, you have to. Mm -hmm. You know, he's never asked. Um, and, and and by the way, I mean, I I, I uh, I've, I've I've sat down with the mayor. Um, uh, I'm impressed. He uh, he actually was in the same class as my wife at, at Harvard. Um, they knew each other a little bit, not well, but uh, so we have some, some connections. But anyways, I'd rather not get in. Yeah. Who would you prefer to be the governor? Not getting in. I'm not getting in the <laughs> middle of that part, right? <laughs> What are those sheets in front of you for? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd love, I mean, who, whoever's inclined, I'd love to get uh, you to you to sign up. I mean, if you're interested in, uh, in, in hearing more about this campaign, we've got had less than 12 months to the primary. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about as we develop this campaign, the message, and, uh, and, and, and certainly I'd love to get your advice too and some of your opinions. Um, I'd love to pass this around if you're inclined to, uh, sorry, I figured I'd start it that way. But uh, please, if you have any questions, I know Sam, you told me there's a time deadline, please. Yes, nice to know how you would um, uh, differentiate yourself from past practice um, in um, the open meetings law and in oversight of lobbyists. How, how would I differentiate myself from the open meetings? Um, well, I mean, right now, you look at the, uh, it, it's, I don't know who is exactly responsible for starting that thing. It was Ginny Langino who, who gets the kudos uh, for doing that. I love that, and, uh, the, the new, the E-Town Crier, how, how it's, you know, coordinated through that. Like I mentioned, it, it it's, has a lot of similarity to the rules and regs. Um, doesn't quite answer your question, but I think there's a lot we can use from that system over to, to the rules and, and regs system to try to get that information um, more accessible, more transparent. Um, lobbyists, I've, 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 I've said that I'm not taking any contributions from um, lobbyists that I have to oversee. I think there's, you know, there's the possibility of uh, appearance of impropriety. I don't want to do it. I, I'm, I'm throwing you know, a lot of my own money um, because I, I believe in this race, but I don't want it to be clouded by anybody who, might, who I may you know, someday be uh, overseeing. How do you feel about Citizens United? Oh, awful. <laughs> we were just, I just went to, uh, uh, it was a climate change uh, panel in New York City with uh, Bill McKibben and um, Seth Claim, uh, no, it was um, Tom Steyer. Who's fair on he, he funded a lot of the, but unbelievable. But we were talking about the citizens. Yeah, somebody was telling me today about. Uh, I'm shocked. Was it Nevada? Dave is more of a like. But some of these states, there's there's no limits on, no limits on corporate money. You can give cash, unlimited amount. I mean, uh, not, I mean it's it, it's insanity and uh, it's it's incredible. But yeah, Citizens United has really opened up. Uh, enormous Pandora's box. Okay. And you know, one thing I'd, I'd love to mention, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, just to follow up on Randall's question, would you push as Secretary of State for open meetings, for, for respecting the open meetings law that's on the books now? Absolutely. I, I, the compliance aspect is, is about as simple as you can possibly get. Uh, and I see it. And yet it's not, and it hasn't been enforced. And I'd like to go above and beyond that. I mean, I, I look at uh, a lot of these quasi-public privates that op operate almost with impunity. I mean, that don't um, that bury stuff in their, their websites. And that's aside from the meetings. The Board of Education, just yeah. as an example. Oh, I, can, I mean, the, the missed opportunities for the state, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's awful, but absolutely. I'm, I'm, all, I'm doing this because I want to help. I'm not, I'm not bought and paid for by anybody, or I'm not doing this because I want to, you know, um, 
be the inside guy or whatever. I'm, 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 I'm doing this because I really want to make a difference here in this state, and I see how valuable the Secretary of State's office, uh, the function of the Secretary of State's office uh, can be, if it's, pro if it's done properly. Well, in that case, what will be your threshold for initiating enforcement actions? Boy, that's an, I mean, that's a big question. I, I mean, uh, I'd love to sit down with you and actually we, we, we could, you know, kind of but create a policy on that, but I, I don't have one right okay. now. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I mean, but, but I'll tell you this, generally speaking, it's a very simple mechanism to comply with. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. I serve on a, on a, on a state board um, that does it. And I think there's there's other things that have been used in some of the uh, other agencies that I've seen where they, they for example, use, uh, what is it called, uh, executive session. They just blanket every single meeting with executive session, which doesn't go with the intent of the law. You know, so. Please, yeah. Oh, oh, um, well, one thing I'd really like to mention, too, is I know, um, and I don't know the specifics right now, but I know we have an opportunity where the, uh, the, the General Assembly is going to be looking at replacing the voting uh, system, the machines, which, uh, which really is, I mean, I think should be exciting for us. We're a small state. We could be a model for the country. What's, what's uh, wrong with the ones we get now? Well, I, well, look at the system, the problems that we, we saw in a bunch of the voting uh, stations. Talk to anybody who, I mean, I don't know if you worked some of the polls where they had five, five pages in the ballots and, um, you know, as you, as you know, the, uh, the Eagle, what is it called, the Eagle uh, Scantron? system has a box that's locked under it. Yeah. If, if there's a jam, you have to call the Board of Elections to come and clear it. And then you've got people waiting in one box. Uh, but, the, but, but there's another thing. I mean, we talked about um, trying to simplify uh, uh, the voting system, you know, to, create, to, to reduce any kind of errors in the voting system. Now, there's, we could use technology. I love the, the, the paper backup, and we can do that. So the clock is kind of slow, so we only have time for one more question. Oh, okay. I don't know if this has much to do to you, but what are your feelings about charter schools in general? Are you supportive or against them, or how do you feel about charter schools? It's, I mean, literally that's so outside of the Secretary of State's function. I haven't looked at it specifically. Um, I, I, I really, I, I'm, you know, I think the teachers, uh, the school system right now, I mean, are, are way overworked, way over uh, underpaid. Um, maybe that's not what you want to hear, but I've talked to a lot of the, uh, the teachers, and I think it's sad. So, and, and, you know, I mean, there's, it's a very complicated um, issue, which I think we right. could go yeah. on and on. Yeah, I know. So. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank Guillaume for coming. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time tonight to come and listen to, uh, to me, and uh, I'd love to have your support come uh, next September. But again, I mean, it's an open, open door. I'd love to hear any questions you have as we go on for Please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask. And thank you, Sam, for, for inviting me. Mm -hmm. uh, just one more question. Do you have an email address you'd like people to get in touch with you? You know what? Let me uh, put the team. Team, yeah. yeah. Put, uh, sorry, my handwritings. <laughs> Yeah, our next guest is right outside. Okay. Yeah. But just in general, we should, the clock probably should be set accurately. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And would you like to receive email updates from uh, our yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. Please.